Welcome back. It's week five of the Ordinary Way study that we're focusing on during Everyday Ordinary Life with Mark. And it is a wonderful journey we've been on. We've just got a couple weeks left. And I want to thank you for your participation in this, whether you've been doing this on your own just by reading the book or whether you've been a part of a life group along the way. I encourage you to, to stay with it, to continue uh, to pour some time into studying the material and really participating uh, with your group or really, again, if you're on your own, just digging in and trying to figure out how you can make this journey of living the ordinary way a part of your journey. And last week we talked about the ways that we can live out ordinary, even in the less than ordinary and the extraordinary ways as well. The way in which we do all of this, the less than, the ordinary, and the extra, is by paying attention to the words that we need to hear. To give us some background on that, I want us to begin by going to the Psalms to, to read a verse there. And so that is where we're going to kick off and you're here in just a moment. We're going to be reading from Psalm, Psalm 90, 119, verse 97 and 98. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. And he goes on to talk about the love he has for God. And some of you know these verses in the longest Psalm of the Old Testament that mainly focus upon the psalmist's love for God's direction and his, his guidance that comes through his word. And when the psalmist referred to this, uh, he's referring mainly to the Mosaic law, the Torah, uh, the five books of the Old Testament that begin the Old Testament, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, these books that are pivotal to the Jewish faith and also to the Christian faith as they really set the, the guide for, for us understanding God's journey that is ultimately fulfilled through Christ. And one thing we do as those who follow the Christ who fulfills all this is to look through the lens of Christ back at all of scripture and see how we are to understand Jesus. Now, something that we need to understand is the Bible refers to two words. And I don't mean words as in a number of words, plural words. I mean, the word word is used twice in very significant ways. And just as in Psalm 119 and throughout scripture, the Bible talks about itself as the word of God, that the scripture is the word of God. One of our essentials at Rabbit Creek Church is that we believe that the scripture is the inspired word of God, the spirit breathed word of God. Uh, we understand that the Bible therefore is a collection of words that make up the word, the truth source from which we get our guidance from God. What John does in his gospel, the fourth gospel we find in the New Testament, is he begins the gospel with an interesting description of Jesus. In fact, we don't find out until about 12, 13 verses into chapter one, who he's talking about. If we were the first recipients of the gospel, we wouldn't know he's talking about Jesus yet. In the very first verse, when he says this, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. We find out later, as I said, that he's referring to the word who became flesh, which is Jesus. So sometimes people are a little confused. Which is it? Is the Bible the word of God or is Jesus the word of the God? Or is Jesus the word of God? The answer is yes. That yes, the scripture is the word of God. And yes, Jesus is the word, the, the word who inspires the word. Jesus is the one through whom all things are made, as scripture says. And it is God breathed. Jesus is a part of that Trinitarian birth of his creation and the, of the word. And so when we refer to the word of God, we're referring to both. And so as believers, we need to focus on the word, the written word of God, and which is also referred to as a living word. But then we also need to focus on capital W, the word of Jesus. Now, how does this all fit together in regard to what we're talking about today and throughout this week of study? 
Well, if we're going to understand the Word, the written Word of God, we're going to best understand it through the lens of Jesus. Christians talk about reading all of Scripture through the lens of Jesus. I understand the law of Moses best if I'm reading it through the lens of Jesus, for example. Well, where this plays into our next section of the book, verses uh, chapter uh, 31 through 41, is we're going to be looking at words of Jesus, or we might say words from the mouth of the Word that we find within the Word. So we're going to find words that Jesus speaks, who is the Word, within the written Word of God. And each chapter is simply going to be one word in, in its title, and we're going to study that word that Jesus said, and then chase it down and see what does he mean by this. So for example, the, the first word we're going to see is Jesus saying, come to me. And so we're talking about the word come, and then we're talking about the word follow and deny and consider and listen and a few on past that. And I want you to, as you read the scripture, keep this the, and, the, and the text that goes with it, I want you to read the word and think about the ways in which Jesus said this, not only in the verses that I cite, but in other stories, if you're familiar with this, uh, dig in to see how many times Jesus invites people to come to him and how many times Jesus calls people to follow him. A couple things I want to point out with our time right now together is a quote that you're going to find in the chapter called Follow. It's a quote from John Knox and it says this, there are two ways to kill men or kill people. One is to rob them of life, the other is to rob life of its meaning. That is so important for, for us to think about as we look at all of the words, not just follow, but we need meaning. If you're gonna find true meaning in life, the way you're gonna do that is by following these one word invitations and commands of Jesus. This is gonna be a very helpful section for you as you find out how to follow Jesus as you live the ordinary way. And then another piece that begins is back in that chapter, we're gonna be calling come from Jesus' words, come to me. He, I'm gonna quote from Timothy, Paul's words to Timothy. And he says this, he says, but you keep your head in all situations. And so I wanna encourage you as you read this, keep your head. You're gonna see some things that are going to be mind blowing things that are encouraging things that are gonna be challenging. Uh, keep your head, think straight. Uh, be a person who's really engaged in the text as we go through this together. So again, we're gonna focus on words spoken by the word that are recorded in the word. And this is gonna be a fun journey. So let's get into the word together. Thanks again for being a part of this journey. We've got a couple more weeks left and so we'll see you next time. Enjoy your group time or enjoy the study on your own. God bless and go out and live your everyday ordinary life for God.